happens if a user who is lost according to this 40 day time frame? I guess I can change for each customer. But uh, what happens if uh, they come back in after that time period? Um, are they still going to be considered churn? And does that change the reports um, and the counts that I might see in my reports retroactively? Yeah, so um, I think what's uh, that's a question that comes up pretty frequently. Um, and basically, uh, the idea here is that if a user has been marked as churned, um, you know, we put them into this lost user bucket. So these are all the users, the total count of users that have been churned for like the past 90 days here. Um, now, if a user has been marked as lost, again, we don't see any activity for, you know, 40 days, for example. Um, you know, if that user say, say that they were totally inactive for the month of July, but then, you know, they come back and they, you know, need to use the, uh, the application for a new project. At that point, they will no longer be considered a lost user. Um, at that point, we'll take that lost user and we'll, we'll mark them as an active user instead. Um, so say, for example, if you're doing some analysis on data from back in uh, maybe April, for example, um, and you see that the, the, you know, this number of lost users gets reduced, um, you know, maybe you checked it last week and then you check it this week and this number is lower than it was. Uh, that's kind of to be expected, again, because some users might be re-engaging with the product. And at that point, they're moved from that lost bucket into, uh, you know, the active count of users. Um, now, if, for example, you see that there's a big swing, so, you know, this, you know, count of lost users for a specific date range is changing very frequently, what might be happening is um, that lost user threshold is either too high or too low. Um, so, again, if that value is changing frequently, what you might want to think about doing is increase that lost user threshold um, because, again, what, what might be happening is, a typical user is just infrequently using the application. So you might not want to necessarily declare them as a lost user um, because they might come back at a later point and use the application, again, maybe for a new project uh, a few months later. Um, now, this also kind of ties into offline usage as well because, say, for example, um, you know, a machine goes offline for a period of time. They're engaged with your product, but because they're not connected to the Internet, we're not collecting any data from them within the usage intelligence world. Um, now, depending on, you know, how that machine's configured, you, you know, we're still logging data to that local cache file about that offline usage data. But because we stopped collecting data from that machine, what might happen is if they're offline for a very long period of time, we might declare them as a lost user. Um, despite the fact that, again, they're engaged with the product, they're just using it in an on offline state. When that machine comes back online at a later point in time, what's going to happen is all that offline data is going to sync up with our hosted infrastructure. Um, and then, you know, at that point, we're going to take that machine. We're, we're not going to mark that user as a lost user. We're going to sync up all of that offline usage data. That's going to be marked as a, an active user. And you'll be able to see all the data associated with that installation and its offline activity within the dashboard. Um, so that's also something to keep in mind. If you see these values kind of fluctuate a little bit, you know, the count of lost users, uh, it's probably not cause for concern. Uh, however, again, if you see those numbers fluctuate more significantly, uh, then you might want to think about configuring that lost usage threshold.